people in what was one of the deadliest school shootings in U.S. history. Nicholas Cruz also pleaded guilty to 17 counts of attempted murder for those he injured in the attack back in 2018 at a high school in Parkland, Florida. The 23-year-old faces the death penalty or a lifetime in prison. That decision will be made by a jury at an upcoming sentencing phase of the trial. Cruz was in court on Wednesday to plead guilty. I am very sorry for what I did and I have to live with it every day. And that if I were to get a second chance, I would do everything in my power to try to help others. And I am doing this for you and I do not care if you do not believe me. And I love you and I know you don't believe me, but I have to live with this every day and it brings me nightmares and I can't live with myself sometimes, but I try to push through. Well, John Lott joins me live now from Montana. He's the founder and former president of the Crime Prevention Research Center. John, thanks so much for joining us uh, on the program. To many people, the solution is simple. Wouldn't greater gun control stop these mass shootings in U.S. schools? Well, I mean, there are lots of countries around the world that have much higher rates of mass public shootings than we have here in the United States. The United States ranks 63rd among countries in terms of fatality rates from mass public shootings. But they have extremely strict gun control. Have Many of them have effective gun bans. Look, if you look in the United States, uh, we just did a report that looked at all school shootings, every place from a discharge of a gun all the way up to a mass public shooting from 2000 through 2018. There are 20 states in the United States that allow teachers and staff to go and carry guns. There's not been an attack of any type where anybody's been wounded or killed at any of the schools that allow teachers or staff to be able to go and carry guns. Uh, you know, if you look at so mass- So you're advocating that as one possible solution, sort of gun-toting teachers? Isn't that the sort of thing we expect to see in places like Afghanistan, not America? Well, I mean, there's, look, 94% of the mass public shootings in the United States take place in areas where guns are banned. These killers, their desire is to get news coverage. And they know the more people they can kill okay. or injure, the more news coverage that they're going to get. But again, look at Europe. You know, where is... So is it the access to firearms? How are they getting their hands on, on the guns if the guns are banned? Is it the access to firearms, whether legal or illegal, that's one of the main drivers of, of gun violence? Well, look, look at France. France had a much worse mass public shooting in 2015 than we've ever had in the United States. 130 people were killed at the concert in Paris. If you look at the per capita rate, France is much higher than the United States. France has a population that's one... Okay, but looking at schools, talking about school well, shootings, they've had school, 17 people German, killed Germany, in Parkland, 20 children at Sandy Hook in 2012, 12 students at Columbine, 83 school shootings... Uh, just since 2018. Oh, I mean, wait, wait, wait. Well, look. Are, the, are these acceptable numbers of dead kids for you to justify the right of Americans to carry guns? Well, look, if, if you want to look at cases that don't involve rival drug gangs fighting against each other, which is almost all the cases that you just talked about in terms of the 83 number, uh, look at Germany. Germany has had uh, since 2000... Okay, but not the Sandy Hook, not Parkland. Oh, not no, Parkland. they've had... So, how no, they've had 18 people safe? killed in How one attack. How can we make sure that schools in the U.S. are safe places for children to go free from the threat of violence? Uh, of the six worst mass public school shootings in Western Europe and the United States, three of those, since 2000, three of those have occurred in Germany. Germany has extremely strict gun control laws. It takes a year to go through the process. They've effectively banned semi-automatic guns in, in the country there. Look, the problem with gun control bans is that it's about as difficult to stop people from obtaining guns as it is to stop them from obtaining illegal drugs. Drug gangs sell guns. They have their own guns to protect their very valuable property. If you think you're going to be any more successful in stopping somebody from getting a gun who really wants to get it, then you stop them from buying illegal drugs. Good luck with that. In the United States, we've tried really hard to stop illegal drugs from being sold. Do you think we've been very successful in stopping that? If you go to a college or you go to a high school, you don't think you can find people who are selling illegal drugs? Those drug dealers have guns in order to protect their valuable, very valuable property. And they make money on selling guns just as they make money on selling illegal drugs.
Are you um, are you an advocate of, of the death penalty? Do you think Nicholas Cruz should uh, face the death penalty over the shooting in Parkland? Yeah, I think the death penalty is useful. Look, some of these mass public shooters have agreed to a plea bargain if the death penalty is taken off the table. So apparently they seem to think that it, it is something that deters them to some extent or they wouldn't agree to the plea bargains. The problem that you face initially is that the types of people who go and do these types of school shootings are committing suicide. They're up front. At some point, people realize they could get worldwide news attention where people would be talking about them if they went and committed suicide by going and killing many other people at the same time. You know, uh, you look at the Sandy Hook killer that you brought up. Uh, he spent two and a half years studying that. He made a graph showing the relationship between the number of people killed in the attack and the amount of worldwide news coverage that he got. And he realized that So are the warning killed, signs being missed? Are the warning signs being missed by the authorities? Well, you know, it's really easy to do Monday morning quarterbacking on these things. You know, one of the problems that you find is yeah. that everybody says, oh, you know, I should have understood that this indicated that that was a problem. It's much easier to try to figure yeah. these things out than it was beforehand. Look, if you look at mass public shooters over the last 30 years in the United States, half of them were actually seeing mental health care experts within six months of their attack. And yet in not one single case did these mental health experts, many of them internationally recognized individuals, recognize those individuals as a danger to themselves or others. It'd be great if you could go and do sure. it. In fact, there's a whole yeah. academic literature on how difficult it is for mental trained mental health care experts to identify these individuals as a danger. You know, I can okay. go through. Okay. John Lott, uh, it's been really interesting to talk to you, but we are running out of time on the program. But I do thank you uh, for speaking to us here at TRT World. Thank you. Thank you.